Computer running slow? Has your machine somehow acquired a life of its own? Or do you simply desire a deeper and more meaningful connection? Be one with your operating system. It's Arizona's computer guru, Mike Swanson, and his show starts now. Listen in, chat in, and watch live streaming at gurushow.com. Want your voice to be heard? Call in with your questions and riddles. The number is 520-790-2040. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030, KVOI, The Voice. Hello and welcome to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040, if you'd like to be part of the show, that's 520-790-2040. Call in with any technology question you have. We'll see what we can do to answer it. Hello, Tara. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. Let's start with a shocking subject. Shocking. It's very shocking. This is shocking news. It's, it's in poor taste, but it's uh, uh, shocking nonetheless. Uh, a Chinese teenager is killed while trying to unplug uh, his cell phone at an internet cafe. Yep. He was charging it, got electrocuted, died. Now, apparently, this is not unheard of in places not here. Yeah. Like Malaysia and China. This happens all the time. And it's apparently not a big enough deal for the uh, staff at the Internet Cafe to respond. Yeah. <laughs> they just let him there. I believe it. Cooking. There's been several other internet cafe deaths that I've read of over the years and they kind of just leave them. Apparently internet cafes in China are dangerous places. Yes. It, it, like there is a rash of people dying from exhaustion mm -hmm. at them because they would they would go on these three day video game binges mm -hmm. and drop dead. Like, what? That's when you're using it as an escape. Like a huge escape. I guess it's it is China. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> kind of oppressive there. That I, I don't know. Maybe that's just what the media wants us to think. Maybe. Maybe. It could be. Could be. You never know anymore. We could have a firewall that is preventing us from seeing the real truth. Just like China. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> End of sarcasm. Um, yeah, so apparently the electrical standards are not quite the same. Not up to here. par. Yeah. Not so much. So he, t he touched his phone and his leg touched the leg of the table. The metal, yes. And uh, apparently he completed a circuit. Yep. That is just crazy. Like one of those potato experiments. You charge, you know? Yeah. It's like a battery. <laughs> that's so wrong. Well, you said the completing the circuit, and that's what popped in my mind. I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> my bad. So, uh, when I was younger, I spent a couple of years in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Europe seems to have pretty decent electrical. Never been. I, I would say that they're not not terrible. No, I've, I've been to central Mexico as well. Never been. And I will say that um, there is a lot of do-it-yourself electrical grid work happening in I'll central bet. Mexico. Yeah, probably. And I'm guessing probably in Malaysia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been. No. But there is a, I, I guess there's a certain amount of, you know, call an electrician, man. Mm -hmm. Has some standards. Yeah, well, maybe they're expensive. There's or no need to get all amped up about this. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was just terrible. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> no need to get amped up about the electrocution. Um, yeah, see, I've never had to deal with that. I've been in the country my entire life. Well, I mean, we have pretty decent electrical standards here. And, you know. Like, I've never even been to Hawaii. Oh, you poor thing. I've never been anywhere. <laughs> That's the saddest story I've ever heard. Yeah. Just go ahead and throw that out I there. joined the military to travel, and I stayed in Arizona for 10 years. So. Ah. Yeah. Well, you're Good doing time. it wrong. <laughs> That's, apparently, you were not doing it right. No, no. not really. By the way, like, you know, advanced round trips to Hawaii, not terribly expensive. For one person. Well, okay, so you, you then you use this fancy math thing. It's called multiplication, and then you add another one for the... Or, you know, three more. Oh, no, you don't take your kids. That's No, that's not how that works. You don't go to Hawaii <laughs> to take your kids. No. I, I have never been on a vacation, like, just a vacation. Find not a, since I've been married, anyway. Find a sitter. Go on a vacation. I've never had a sitter either. Other this, than my this is, it's good for your health. I'm telling you. 
This is, I know because I'm going crazy, and summer vacations coming up, and I'm not looking forward to it. This is coming from the person that doesn't take vacations, but anyway. All right, so uh, maybe I'll go to China. Yeah, go to China, <laughs> and you can play some video games. Maybe Check out the internet. Charge cafes. a phone. Try not to die. It, Be so an adventure. Th- yeah, but the whole do-it-yourself thing mm-hmm. is it's obviously dangerous. Right. Yeah, there are there are things where you know if you if you do it yourself or you don't have the appropriate standards, then you end up in 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 a world of hurt. Yes. Much like a Bangladesh bank, who uh, apparently had no firewalls, and had a ten dollar router installed, and were hooked up to you know world financial stuff. Good and, job, guys. And well. They stole $56 million from the hackers did from the bank. And uh, they were going for a billion. They were. But uh, didn't quite get close they to that. But they made a couple of mistakes that led them to be found out. And somebody then found the $10 router and unplugged it. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, the hackers' face when they came across that find. They're like, this can't be a bank. The, the, come, here, come here, look at my screen. <laughs> Can you believe this? Really? Oh, no firewalls and a $10 router. Oh, man. Standards. It comes back to standards yeah, again. you got to have some standards here, right? You know, try not to do it yourself. Call a professional. That's really what it comes down to. Oh, my goodness. $10. My router wasn't even 10 bucks. I mean, you think of it this way. They could have spent, they should have had a nice high-end, let's say, $1,000 firewall. Mm-hmm. That thousand dollars could have saved them fifty-six million dollars. I'm just saying. Especially it's a bank. Oh, I'm sorry. Fifty-six million pounds, eighty million dollars. Oh, yeah, even yeah. better. Yeah, <laughs> it was on their list. They were getting around to it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was in the budget for upgrades next year. <laughs> it's always twenty dollar. It's always in next year's budget. That's and, and that's one of the things that's always bothered me about corporate IT. Right, back when I used to do corporate IT, because you know. Had to work. I. It was before I realized that I was a terrible employee, and so I worked for other people. Um, yeah, the, the corporate IT is always under the finance department, nearly always. All right, your direct boss as an IT supervisor, it was to the accounting department, not to anyone else. You weren't your own department; you were a sub department of the bean counters, and. The problem with that is, is that at least back when I was doing this was you know twenty years ago, mm-hmm. there was the, the bean counters did not care at all for technology. They were just like, eh, we don't need it. I use paper and pencils, and uh, and so when you're trying to convince them, hey, we need new routers, to, I don't know, prevent people from breaking in and stealing stuff. They're like, no, you don't. Make do with what you've got. Isn't there? A, what do they call it? A, a floppyware update or something? <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> yeah, Just accountants. Cup holder. Yeah, yeah. They, they anyway. Ten dollar router. All it took was you know investing properly in the hardware. And if you have like an old router or there's, I'm, I I can't say the name of the place just because I don't want to embarrass them too much, but. I went to do a console for a movie theater, Mm -hmm. and they had a vintage 10 megabit hub on, like, their machines up front in the box office. Like, wow! now, just to express how terrible that is, it's, there's no switching involved, right? So you have, you end up with things called collisions on hubs, which is why hubs no longer exist. It's why they stopped making them 15 years ago is that they're just, they're terrible. It's uh, it's like the old party line if, you know, where people could pick up the phone and everybody's talking at the same time and you right. can get a word in edgewise. That's exactly how, what hubs are. Whereas switches are more like today's telephone system where you actually get directed to the right number. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's one of those things. It's it's not only is it just terrible for, for performance, but it's also security risk as well. It makes it so that you can 
cause major problems with the network security just by you know injecting some packets into the network and they just go everywhere and it's just like come on now they, it, you you charge more for popcorn than what a new switch would cost you yeah so come on get a switch and uh so hopefully we'll get around to doing that <clears throat> eventually someday uh-oh sometimes i can't i can't hear the cat he's talking there, there it go. goes the button's stuck Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to say, um, maybe no one just ever pointed that out, Mike. You know, ever. Maybe. No I, one ever came in and said, hey, this is a problem. Uh, you know. Well, you know, we're, we're working on convincing them to sure, uh, change sure. some things. Like, I don't know. I understand that it works, sort of. Yeah. But, you know, you got to you do it right. So does man. XP. Yeah, <laughs> so, sort of. does, so does XP. <laughs> so does anything made by Yugo. Yeah. There you oh, go. Man, I haven't seen one of those. Oh, um, anyway, I don't, I don't even want to think about the Yugo cars. Speaking of cars. Speaking of cars. What What about cars, Tara? What about them? <laughs> it's getting hot out there. <laughs> it is getting hot. And a lot of people are probably going to need their cars fixed. Well, you should Oil probably, change. You should probably get your, your cooling system checked out because I know that it was, uh, it went from winter to, well, sort of winter to nearly spring to summer and like what? 36 hours pretty much yeah and uh it was pretty hot the other day so it was hot yesterday <clears throat> yesterday was very hot i had to resume uh as you saw here uh when i when i park at the station in the summer i don't park here i park out in the desert under a tree mm -hmm. just for shade so now i know it's summer again because i'm parking under a tree um, but yeah, go down the Perfection Artworks, get your cooling system checked out just to make sure that you have the ability to cool the interior of your vehicle. <laughs> Unless you're one of those weirdos that wants to just be hot all the time. Don't be a weirdo. No. Call Perfection Artworks, check out their website. It's new, according to them. PerfectionAutoworks.com. And listen to their ad that's coming up next. And uh, we'll be right back. Computer Troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. Your technology guru, Mike Swanson, is answering all your questions one by one. Yes, science! So chime in with yours. The website is gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is The Computer Guru Show. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name's Mike here to deal with your technology needs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040. <clears throat> the microphone was not in the right spot here. It there we creeps. go. There's some WD-40 up in here. Oh, you know, I don't want to talk about WD-40. There's enough <laughs> Star Wars going on right now. Jeez. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Two best products ever, Simple Green and WD-40. Just uh, saying. Okay. Why? Because they're excellent products. Simple Green gets... It got a full gallon of paint out of my carpet. All right. So let, let begs the question. <laughs> how did you end up with a full gallon of paint in your carpet? Because um, there was a fort being made in my house with blankets and a bucket of paint. And the blanket got pulled. Bucket of paint went on the floor. There's a bada bing, bada boom. There you go. I, I feel like a four year old because everything I want to say is why. <laughs> yeah, why? yeah. It, it wasn't even me. It was my husband. <laughs> Sorry, John, throwing you under the bus. <laughs> Lovely. Yep. All right. So, do you have a Vizio TV? No, I have an old TV. Right. Well, lots of people have Vizio TVs. You know why? Because they're cheap. Yeah. yeah. Are they? Yeah. Oh. Of, well, I still don't want one. Of the big TVs, the big, you know. LCD TVs, they mm -hmm. are, they're the cheap ones. Okay. Yeah, they're getting down at, uh, they're the ones that are always on the B Black Friday sales. Oh, uh, okay. All right, the Vizio TVs. Do you have a Vizio TV there, Kent? What? I can't hear you again. Your button's stuck again. <laughs> there you go. I'm here now. Okay. <laughs> do you have a Vizio TV? I do. Okay. 48-inch Vizio. I'm looking at maybe upgrading to 60 here soon. Okay. Well, I love it. Maybe upgrade to not Vizio. No, no, you, you don't like Vizio. No, you can turn it off. There's a feature. <laughs> okay. That, oh. So you know, smart TV people, you know, the the people who make smart TVs, they tend to be, uh, they tend to be, you know, going on about the, the, our TVs can do this and can do that, but there's a feature that the Vizio TVs have that 
they're not necessarily advertising mm-hmm. and that it's watching you and, oh. and reporting back home yeah, to you about the things that you do. Mine's older. I don't think it has the, uh, you're talking about like a webcam, built-in webcam or something like that? N- not necessarily a webcam, uh, but just keeping track of your, your data information. Um, so if you have a Vizio TV that is turned on by default, that's 10 million TVs out in the world right now. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of TVs. That, that do that. Um, there's an opt-out option. You can go to Vizio's website and say, I would prefer that you not track information about me, and they give you inf- or instructions on how to turn that feature off on your TV. Okay, um, so you can turn it. It's not just like one of those don't call me logs where they still call you after you say put me on the do not call list. Yeah, something like that. Okay. But um, there, basically it, it, it gives you the ability to have the TV stop tracking your viewing habits, app usage, stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, this seems like sort of a minor thing <clears throat> as far as, you know, all it right, it, like it's it. keeping track of usage. All right, whatever. Um, but there, it's one of those things that always sort of makes me kind of step back from it and go, hmm, you know, because one, why isn't, why isn't this feature advertised? Mm-hmm. Because it's not, you know, somebody just found it. You know, there, luckily there's these, these people that are ultra paranoid and they, they hook all their stuff up to, you know, packet tracing devices. And they're like, so why is this information leaving the TV? You know, and what is contained within that information that's leaving, and then they check it out. And they're like, who needs to know what time I turned on the TV or turned it off or any of that type of information? Um, and so the the reason that I that kind of makes me stand back a little bit and go, no, why? Is because if it, that type of stuff is happening on something as innocuous as a television, um, then what other devices are doing that? And uh, and what ramifications does that have for us? You, you know how I feel about people tracking data and then using it to uh, sort of connect the dots mm-hmm. because you can connect the dots in any way you want. You can you can make anything happen. Any uh, any theory that you may have, you can make you can have proof of if you just connect the dots in the right way, even if it's inaccurate. Right. So I have my issues with data being tracked and stored, and uh, I have a Vizio TV. Well, uh, I don't use it. I wonder if they're getting – they're probably just sad. There's somebody <laughs> on the other end that goes, oh, this guy has this TV, and he's turned it on twice in a year. <laughs> Aw. See, I could, I could see where some of the information might be handy for them um, analytically. Mm-hmm to know when, like how often somebody has a TV on, like for screen usage to see, you know, technically how they could build the TV better, stuff like that. But some of the information, yeah, it would worry me. I I would feel better about if they did want that type of information in more of a sort of a black box style, right? Where it could store that information on the TV for post-mortem, so to speak. TV drops dead. You have a little port that you can open, you can pull out a flash drive, and you can mail it off to Vizio if you want them to have that information. Yeah, but at the same time, if if they're building, you know, they build new types of TVs every year and stuff. If you have a TV like me, I've had my TV for 10 years Mm -hmm. or something, Um, you know, and it's not dead yet. So, I mean, how do they know (laughs) what my usage is otherwise? I mean, I understand in some ways, but yeah, I, I don't agree that they didn't advertise or let anybody know about that. I think they should have at least said something or had some small print somewhere or something. Yeah, so it does things like it analyzes snippets of the shows that you're watching. And so it knows what you're watching. It's sort of like mm-hmm. SoundHound for... Does it report it to Nielsen Ratings or anything like no, that? No, just a Vizio. Hmm. Is that certain models or later models? Does uh, it say? It didn't say what year that started. It could be. I heard rumors about it when Vizio first started introducing smart TVs. Okay. So I don't know that the, how far back that goes. Just curious. I'll look it up and see if I can find it for you. It's uh, interesting. But it's it's between Vizio and Apple and Microsoft and Google and everybody trying to get your information. It just it's irritating. Time to go analog. Yep, write everything down on paper. Let's go ahead and take a call here. Let's talk to Jim. Hey, Jim, how are you? Fine. Uh, I have a laptop and a regular computer uh, that I updated to Windows 10. 
and I'm running an HP 3015 laser printer, and it doesn't seem to operate anymore. Do I have to uninstall all the drivers and reinstall, or what's your suggestion? You say it's a 3015? Yes. Well, let me look at this model. Hold on. Hold on. I got to... I got, to, I got to type into the Google here, HP 3015. Yeah, that's one of the lower end. Um, stand by. This is, this is live tech support here. <laughs> we're we're going to see what's going on here. Uh, I would assume that he'd just redo the drivers. But maybe the How are you connected? Uh, by Comcast. I mean the computer to the printer. Oh, oh, uh, by uh, uh, USB. USB, okay. Do you have the disk that came with that? I doubt it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it is a supported printer, so it still works in 10, which is great, which was my initial fear was there, you know, there are certain models typically oh. in the, in the like, 1 to 3,000 range that no longer function in Windows 10. Oh. Uh, but okay. yours does have... Windows 10 support, so you might want to go download some new drivers for this thing. Okay. Um, there's, if you go to the device manager, do you want to get the device manager? Yeah. Okay, so you go to the device manager. You're going to go down to, to USB devices, and uh -huh. you're going to look for something called USB printing support. And you're going to I have to, didn't see that down there. If you don't see it, that's a problem. It's supposed to be there. So, oh, it's supposed to be there. All right, so you're going to look for something called USB printing support and delete it. And then, okay. then unplug the printer, plug it back in, and it should reinstall itself and begin to print or begin to oh, work. Oh, okay. Now, if it doesn't, uh, you might have to have a, have a little perusing of the HP website to get a new set of drivers for it. And they have some utilities that allow you to completely eradicate the former HP installations on your computer. So, mm -hmm. um you can find that, and and you have to run it four times, just so you know. Even oh, though it doesn't do? tell you that, but oh. each time you run it, it's a different stage. So you keep running it until everything is gone. Oh, okay. So if you go in and and uninstall, the well, that's that's only the with printer. this this particular utility, the the oh. HP cleaning utility. It's a four oh. time thing. You have to run it four times. Oh, okay. All right, I'll look that up and see if I, that works. I appreciate your time, okay, no and your and your help, okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank Speaking you. of Windows Ten, yeah, it's about that time, folks. You need we would we told you we would tell you when it's about that time to start doing your upgrades. It is about that time. It is. Yeah. So you have about a month, a little over a month, before the the free upgrade process goes away, and so this is your opportunity to do the Windows 10 upgrade, get everything situated so that it works again, because you know there's gonna be some issues. Mm -hmm. on At least on most machines, there's some issues. And it still gives you the opportunity to roll back to seven before the Windows 10 expiration. So you have that option. So if you are, if you've been putting off the Windows 10 upgrade, it's about that time. And you should do that. If you need some help with that, we can help you. You can give us a call down to the shop at 304-8300. You can schedule an appointment. We can do it as a remote. You can bring it in, and we can do it for you and make sure that everything works. You have all kinds of options. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the Computer Guru Show. Your computer guru, Mike Swanson, is here to help you tame that beast of a machine. Join the chat right now at guruShow.com or call in. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at guruShow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. So do you feel like you may not be living in the right space? Do you not know where you, you should be? Do you think, man, I hate the town that I'm living in, but I just don't know where to go? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently there's a website for you, teleport.org. You're going to talk about this while I <laughs> while I type in the the stuff here. Okay, so it's a it's a pretty pretty simple matching system. You put in stuff that you're looking for, what's important to you, your income, and and your your current income and your current uh, like rent or mortgage, and then it comes up with places. It gave me Tartu, Estonia. 
as a <laughs> as a place to live. And I've never thought about that because I I rarely think about because we already talked about that you don't know you don't do anything. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'm I stay at home, <laughs> but it says I match eighty five percent with Tartu Estonia, which is interesting to me. So oh. so it can pick anywhere in the world, or do you limit I it to so. countries or any? Limit? I don't know if you can limit it. It just it gave me a bunch. It gave me Tartu, Tallinn, which is also in Estonia. Oh, uh, Vil- Vilnius. I don't know where that is. I gotta open it in a new tab. Um, Lithuania. So apparently, I should be living not here. <laughs> not here. Not <laughs> even in this country. All of not mine in the all, desert. All of mine are in the United States still. Are you for real? Yeah. Wow. My top match, San Francisco. Well, I, I can go, see that. Get to go back home. I can see. Oh, where's really? Riga? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then <laughs> Ottawa. I, I recognize <laughs> Ottawa. I recognize that one at least. Yeah. Well, you said you've never been to Canada. Latvia. It gave me Riga, Latvia. So my uh, top five, San Francisco, Boston, Toronto, Chicago, and Austin. I was going to say Austin, Texas. I could see you going to Austin. I could. It's They're a tech boom. In Austin. Oh, man. It's and it's a tech boom area. It's a great yeah. city. South by Southwest is there. Wouldn't oh, have to Salt Lake City. So, but yeah. No Portland, Oregon, like you thought I should move to. <laughs> Medford, Oregon. He was like, I, I could see Oregon. It yep. does have Seoul on here for me, though. Hey, well, that's nice. Seoul, Korea. You have fast internet if you go to Korea. Yeah. Fastest internet in the world. There you go. There you go. Even their slowest internet <laughs> package faster is, than ours. F- is faster than any other place on the planet. Stay away from the cafes. Yeah. And then you can further you can further refine the results on the left-hand side. There's a menu that you can refine. So what is the point things. of this, though? I, you, I don't know. I guess if you're wanting to get away from everything that you know and love. <laughs> Another time waster, Mike. I guess. It's just like... <laughs> Look at it doesn't include the cost of. I mean, San Francisco is expensive, man. Well, it yeah. compares everything to San Francisco, uh, so yeah. it's like this is fifty four percent less than San Francisco area. Yeah, so for me to, apparently to rent a place in San Francisco, according to this, is thirty eight thousand dollars a year. That's a minimum. Yeah. Oh, oh man, that's. That's and, a and you won't be doing anything but paying your rent and maybe eating. And that's about it. And panhandling. Yeah. <laughs> that's about it can be a busker. <laughs> I'm going to have to paint myself silver and go stand out on the on the wharf. I think that's already and be taken. be the robot. <laughs> yeah. That job's taken. That job is definitely taken. Send pictures. No, it's not happening. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess if, if you want to you know, explore, we're... I don't know. It's it's just. It's I don't know. It's kind of interesting too, because like I would have never considered Estonia. I had a uh, secret Santa from Estonia. The truth Estonia. Is, is, you're still not uh, considering Estonia. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I I've never really thought about the country of Estonia at all. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I see. So like now I could go to Wikipedia and check it out. Yeah, you find can some pictures. Travel through Wikipedia. Yeah, via Google, Google. Google Earth. That's why I like. I you ever do that where you go to no. Google Maps <laughs> and you go into Street View and then you just walk around. That's not walking around. That's how I. Do, <laughs> that's how I do tourism, <laughs> and I'm like show me the Eiffel Tower and I plop down in in Street View and then just walk around, on the internet. Oh, that's OMG. what I do. No. Well, I don't have a passport. Or oh. money. So. Maybe you, need, you need to do that for Hawaii. Just plop down in Hawaii yeah, and walk around. Yeah, I've done that. Well, there you take go. Take a vacation. Yeah. There's a lot of places, And you're complaining though. you've never been anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you've been plenty of places, you've been, lady. You've been yeah. virtually everywhere. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I was just discussing, there's so many places here I've never been. And I've been here for nearly 11 years. And, like, I've never been to old Tucson Studios. Uh, well, since it burned down, there's no need. Oh, did it? I did a little while back, and oh. then they rebuilt it. And now it's terrible. Oh, so <laughs> well, I've uh, never been. I've never been to actually, like ninety percent of places here. You should go see it once, at least once. Titan Missile Museum, also a good place to go once. I probably won't. I, I grew up in SoCal, and I never went and saw the Walk of Fame or anything like that. So here's here's the one that that I feel bad about is that I'm a pilot and I haven't been to the the Pima Air and Space Museum, even though everybody says it's awesome. I've never been to that either. I haven't been to it. I don't get out much. I drive by it all the time, and I'm like, "Oh, look, airplanes." I should in the go sun. there someday, and I don't. Yeah. <clears throat> nope, not happening. We don't go anywhere. I, I do. You know how much I work? That's not yeah, happening. Well, yeah, you you work all the time. All right. Um, so d- minor news: Microsoft and Google have decided that they're friends now. Ooh. Well, I don't know about 
friends. They've agreed to end all regulatory complaints against one another. They're still frenemies, I think. I wouldn't say friends. I, I don't know. I think that they they are so. I mean, other than in the mobile market, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily compete. Not really. In anything, really. So, I, other than Bing, <laughs> they which don't is really not compete in the mobile market either. <laughs> in in yeah, or in the search market. Yeah. Because Bing is. <sighs> Poor yeah. Bing. I, I mean, I feel bad for all of the people that are stuck on the Bing browser because uh, the Bing search engine because they just don't understand how to change it, and it's not like they could Bing it and figure out because there's you can't get any useful information out of Bing usually. You know what? On the phone, when I had the Windows phone though, Bing was actually really good. Well, you didn't. But have on a the choice. web browser, no, I did. I could go to Google, but. It, it wasn't bad on the phone. On the web, though, I, I never use it. I've tried a couple times, and it gives me things that have nothing to do with I, what I search for. Do you know anybody that uses Bing? I don't. I mean. <laughs> well, he's in the computer Unfortunately. business. Unfortunately. Well, I mean, <laughs> besides the theater with the uh, hub. Well, no, no. I mean, a lot of people, they, the, it, they're, if they've moved into Windows 10, it sets your default as Bing. Correct. And quickly set it um, back. And there's, oh, yeah. But there's a lot of people that just don't understand how to change it. Right? Gotcha. They think, yeah. oh, this is the internet. Gotcha. This is how sure. it works. This is how we get out there now. Right. Yeah. Uh, apparently, this changed with the upgrade also. <laughs> or I got this new computer, and now it's bang. So I, I, I think that they don't understand the the yeah. difference, but that you have a choice when sure, it comes sure. to which uh, you know browser or search engine you're using. Isn't Makes there sense. one Makes called sense. Lucky Duck or something like that? Uh, Duck Duck Go. Okay, is another one that's out there. That's if you don't want people tracking you, oh. <laughs> because it doesn't use any uh, site tracking. It doesn't. I would do use it if I ever remembered the name. Yeah, well, it's Duck Duck Go. Duck Duck Go. There you go. I'm not going to remember that. Um, and then what was the, the other thing I wanted to get to here? Uh, was it see. the other China one? No. Oh, was it? Yeah, there's one more. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> China to develop floating... Nuclear power plants. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, they can't even make a safe internet cafe. I mean, <laughs> who really wants to see, you know, uranium-laden ships floating around? Well, I guess they have a... They built an island chain. In the South China Sea. I don't care what they built. And so in order to power it... <laughs> they built internet cafes, too. <laughs> in order to power it, they want to build floating nuclear power plants. I've got one word. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should be boom. <laughs> now you see it, now you don't. Because that's what we need atop our world uh, food supply when it comes to fish. Yes. And, uh, you know, water. Yeah, you, that's what you need. They look like a Disney cruise ship. That's and what it looks I like. bet it's just as Mickey Mouse. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, no, no. Um, I can just picture Homer Simpson floating around. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Working on one of those. Oh, man. Holy moly. Okay, so go ahead and get your Windows 10 upgrade, please. Just, Before the world ends. Yeah. <laughs> Due to floating power plants. <laughs> I don't know how this thing's tied together, but you know, you should probably do that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or, heaven forbid, a virus, oh. No. No. Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030 KVOY The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology problems and treat you like a person in the process, 790-2040. The last segment. This is your last, like, seven minutes to get in here and ask your question here. Basically, yeah. Yeah, then, then we're out of here. You have to wait another week. Unless you want to call the shop. You can call the shop at 304-8300 anytime you like. Or email. Or email, right? Or uh, go subscribe to the YouTube page because we could use it. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to 
put out a bunch of YouTube stuff and we need more subscribers in order to enable some of the features in YouTube. So you should do that. You should get all over it right now. Do it. Do it. You can go to guruShow.com. There's links there to get you to all of the places where you should be, you know, checked on and subscribed and all of that stuff. Also, for uh, customers of Arizona Computer Guru, you know that we do a newsletter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're thinking about branching out into like three or four different newsletters that are topic-based. So if you want stuff that's about like security updates and all of that, there'll be a separate place to sign up for that particular newsletter. And you'll, if there's any like hot button, like last week where you had Flash, um, uh, you know, the critical updates and all of this, then we'll have a way to reach you to give you the, give you the skinny on what's really happening. The skinny? The skinny, that's right. The 411, the, the deets? The, the deets? <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to give out the deets. <laughs> but uh, we may give you the 411, maybe. Which is another thing that I'm sure that the kids of today will have no idea what that means. Oh, they won't, because they yeah. think that the pound symbol is a hashtag, so. Right. Hashtag 411. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take some phone calls here. Let's talk to Mark. Hello, Mark. How are you? Hey, all right. I heard you spout off that it's time to finally allow that crazy pop-up to take over and put in uh, Windows 10. Yep. And and when you let it do that in a, you know, direct upgrade methodology there, do you ever have to type in anything, any any key number, or does it just find it and go, and by the end of the day it's done? Pretty much it's done on its own. You don't have to put in anything. And the, and the keys now for Windows 10 are... They're not the same as the way they used to be. Now they're built into the... It, it's looking at the hardware ID for your machine. So it, it it's not the same type of structure. But anyway, you don't have to type anything. And you just... Oh, do you have to have the hardware ID turned on? Uh, it, no, it, it figures that part out, believe me. If it's even offering you the, the Windows 10 upgrade, it's already done that part. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of times uh, we run the machines with that hardware ID turned off. And then it... We'll yeah, it's not that pulling it's that out of bias. It's it's making a Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's it's making its own mathematical computation to figure out which machine is which. And um yeah, cuz they say that you can also install it Windows 10 clean after I don't know how many months there, but then I'm assuming you got to put in your Nope, your key. You, you don't even have to put in a key then cuz it Oh, or, you don't even have to put a key then. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. It knows. Right. It knows. Huh? Yeah. yeah. The shadow knows. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fairly simple process to upgrade to. All right. So please launch 1984.exe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got one more quick question then. Make it quick, man. Uh, Let's go. Got a hardware uh, or we got a, uh, um, you know, a, a um, solid state drive. Uh -huh. And what's the optimum swap file to get the most out of your machine? Do you have one like how many percent of the how much RAM do you have? memory? Well, let's just say it's got 8 gig of RAM. 8 gig of RAM? Yeah. No, I mean, especially if you're in the newer versions of Windows, you just let system manage. But, um, yeah, there's there's no real optimal anymore. To, uh, like, most of the machines that we're building these days, you know, they're going to be 16 or 32 gigs right. of RAM on them. And right, we yeah, just... we're trying to optimize an 8, an eight gig one that, uh, that the daughter of a friend is trying to do super gaming on and... And I'm taking her down the path to. I think we need more, a more real machine. So, yeah, maybe a little. Um, yeah. But the, the system managed under seven, eight, and ten is pretty decent. Um, you just leave it alone. Uh, but the, the real recommendation is, is you know, you get to that sixteen or thirty-two gigs of RAM and just shut off the swap file altogether. Right, right. It won't, we, this is maxed out. You know, we can't do that. So. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate the call. Yeah. Good day. Bye. Let's talk to Philip. Hello, Philip. How are you? Yes, hello. Hello. How can I help you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I was forced to get Windows 10 because my XP will no, no longer be supported. <laughs> so, yeah. so now the question becomes antivirus. I think I've heard you talk once before that the Defender in, in uh, Windows 10 is sufficient. It's decent but not sufficient. So the if you're going to use Defender, uh, then you should also have the paid version of Malwarebytes on your computer. I I took your advice and already did that. Yeah, you Anything? should be good to go then. Really? Okay, because yeah. I'm I'm getting IT people, which you know that's in quotes, 
telling me that I need more. I mean, you could put more on there, but I, on the, uh, as a basic philosophy, I'm, I'm opposed to paid antivirus. Not a okay. fan. Um, there are other antiviruses you could use out there that are free. Um, so instead of Defender, you could use a Vast or a Vera or Panda. Uh, Panda. Panda's okay, but there's been some issues with Panda lately. Uh, How about AVG? AVG's decent. Uh, the problem with AVG is they don't do just an, just antivirus anymore. They want to do this. Let's go ahead and do everything. And okay. I don't like those either. Right? Okay. I just want an antivirus that does antivirus and does it well. Gotcha. Okay. What other question? Now that I get. I've got an extra computer that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Is there a place you can uh, get rid of those? So you can, there's all kinds of different places. There's Rise, uh, uh, 22nd and Euclid. Uh, there is, you can take them to us and we'll recycle them. Uh, oh. There's the Pima County uh, uh, Hazardous Waste Recycling over at Prince and I-10. There's lots of places. But if you want oh. us to recycle it for you, we can we can do that. You can just drop it off at any of our locations and we'll do that for you. Well, very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for the call, Philip. Let's take a moment to mention our uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. We have Perfection Auto Works, as usual. They are have been very generous and help us out with paying the bills down here. Just so you know, I don't get paid to do this. It's quite the opposite. So uh, if if you want to help us stay on the air, you have the opportunity to to donate money to the show. It's a monthly thing. You can donate as little as a dollar a month, and uh, we would really appreciate it. It helps us to afford other things, research time, uh, the building of the web show that is uh, impending, which is why we still need you to go to YouTube and subscribe to our channels. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can donate more. If you donate more, you can even get mentioned on the show. Specifically like... Desert Pro Commercial Cleaning, LLC, the best Tucson janitorial services. You can find them at TucsonDesertPro.com. We really like the Desert, the Desert Pro people. They clean the Eastside location. You can go check it out at 64 North Harrison. Or you can go over to our, our main location, 510 East Fort Lowell. Uh, we're, we're here to help you. This is sort of what we do. Uh, the, the whole radio show thing is just the weekend gig. But Outlet. during the week, uh, we fix your computers. We do corporate IT. We build websites. We do effectively anything that you can think of when it comes to technology. And if we don't do it, we know exactly who you should go to to get it done. Uh, so make sure you check us out. Go to azcomputerguru.com or give us a call down at the shop at 304-8300. And, you know, it's, it's good times. It's what we do. We enjoy what we do. And uh, helping the community is kind of what I'm all about. Yeah. Informing people Love on you. how to do things the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please do things properly. Um, it will help you in the long run. And I understand that, you know, the... the there's a lot of people that are afraid of this Windows 10 upgrade, mm -hmm. and with decent reason, I suppose. I mean, because we've all been exposed to Millennium and Vista and 8. Um, but there's a reason that Microsoft's pushing really hard on the on the upgrade, not only to get everybody on a single platform, but the security updates are coming faster and faster these days just because of the ever-evolving threats that are out there as far as security is concerned. And uh, I know that, uh, like, I was on the, I did a little pop in on the show before us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of threats out there. Oh, so thank you very much for listening to the Computer Guru Show this week. Give us a call down at the shop at 304-8300 or send us an email, radio at azcomputerguru.com. We will see you next week. Well, smiley and stuff. <laughs> see ya.